you, Joshua, for taking your time and answering the questions about your experience as a DTP trainer and of the DTP programs. Uh, would you start off with just introducing yourself to us and share a bit about your work and the communities you're involved with? Sure. I'm a lecturer at the University of Hawaii. I teach in political science, Hawaiian studies, and Pacific Island studies. And I'm also the director of the International Human and People's Rights Law Program in Innes in Vienna. And then I also teach at the International Training Center for Teaching Peace and Human Rights in Geneva, Switzerland. And I'm fortunate that I've been an advisor to many different indigenous peoples around the world, from Asia Pacific, but also Africa and the Americas, to focus on indigenous rights. And most importantly, of course, began my work working with the Kanaka Maoli people of Hawaii. Thank you, nice. Um, throughout the years, you've been a trainer on a number of DTP training programs. What makes the training program so special that you have to come back to train so often? What I think is important about DTP and the process is that we really create highly intensive integrated programs where individuals can come who are already involved at home. And when they come there, they're already hungry for knowledge to be able to get the information to be able to have an impact immediately upon their return. So it's one of those things that it's it's worth coming back again and again because one, you know the knowledge you share will be, that kernel of knowledge will really always transform and become an action. And so it's not just a lecture for a grade or it's not just a, a discussion you're doing for the sake of enriching your mind. You actually know every time you do a diplomacy training program, the information you provide will be taken almost immediately and there will be an action and an initiative planned on that will have an impact on an institution in a community or at the country level. Nice. Um, what has been the best thing about your experience as a trainer? The best thing probably about being a trainer is one, you're always getting new information. You're able to see the latest issues happening on the ground from indigenous peoples, what's happening, and also, also to sharpen your skills. That if you think you know everything already about international law and you think you're aware of exactly what has to happen, you don't know what's going on. It's always important to get the latest updates and then be able to organize around those situations to then be able to have a really a lasting contribution with the communities that you've been asked to assist. So. What I am fortunate to be able to do and why I do always participate is that you're always learning about what's going on that hasn't even made it to the headlines yet. And you also get to know exactly what's most important to people. So sometimes when you do international human rights, a lot of times people are focused around what goes on in Geneva and what goes on in New York. But with DTP, you have to translate a text or a treaty into something that would be transformational for people and that would have a change, a positive contribution in their lives. So it's the ultimate test of our, your knowledge, if it's useful and what you can utilize it for to have an impact. Um, so DTP has gathered advocates and human rights defenders from across the Asia Pacific to build solidarity. How do you see this solidarity building across the Asia Pacific? The important part is the DT programs as they're created, and as I've seen them happen in dozens of countries, is that there's really a friendship that's forged during that time together. Uh, you're able to meet with other people who are facing the exact same situation in entirely different states. So that, that commonality and that bond is really forged during that time together. And what's really important is also you kind of create theme teams People care about specific aspects of indigenous rights, women's rights, environmental protection, human rights defenders, migrant workers. And based on those themes, people know that they actually work together beyond that one week or three weeks with DTP, but usually for almost their entire careers. So the network that is actually established is always enhanced throughout time. I'll be at the United Nations and I'll see people that I've worked with at DTP who have now gone to the next level. So that's one of the exciting aspects of you see the solidarity, not only in, in civil society at the community space, but then also people are able to influence the international institutions as well. 
In your opinion, do you find the DTP training programs helpful to advocates and human rights defenders uh, we bring into the programs? I do. I, also, I always call it the, the LLM in a short time period. So I, I know a lot of people who have done an LLM and then came to a DTP and they said, wow, I, I learned more in these short weeks than I did in an entire year of, of study. So I think that's one of the most important elements of, of the DTP course is that it's pragmatic, passionate information that you would be able to input into whatever institution you're trying to influence. And that I think is probably the best part is people come with a problem and then say, what would you do? And you get to actually develop a strategy. And most often with the DTV program, it actually is the beginning of a strategy that then people take immediately back home and begin to take action with it. So I think that's probably the most exciting part about the DTP courses is you learn so much in such a short time period. But then the other side is it's also forged great friendships where people then months after, if not years after, say, okay, our UPR is coming up. I remember you said this. I don't remember all about it. What should I do? this is where we're at now and then it allows me to be able to step in and see what the most recent situation is and to be able to provide substantive uh, progress forward. Um, have you personally made connections with the alumni and learned from their experiences? Absolutely. A lot of alumni are actually now in leadership positions in various institutions. So one example is uh, Rochelle Diver, who's now at the International Indian Treaty Council, which is one of the, it's the oldest indigenous people's organization with ECOSOC status at the UN. And we met at a DTP training, and since then we've collaborated on different events such as the UN World Conference on Indigenous Peoples, also the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, the most recent Paris Agreement and the negotiations around that, and also uh, she'll be in Hawaii next month where they're having their 42nd annual conference focusing on taro, which is the sacred food of the Kanakamoli of the Hawaiian people, and also a conference on regional issues as well for indigenous people. So on an exciting note, you never know when it'll happen, but she's coming to Hawaii and we're actually then coordinating other conferences and meetings that uh, are just examples of how this plays out and the possibilities that are endless. Would you encourage other advocates and human rights defenders to attend DTP training programs and why? I think DTP training programs are just a great way for, in a way, if, if you're involved, it's a, it serves a couple of purposes. When you go to a DTP program, it gets you out of the daily activism grind where you're putting out fires and you're constantly working to try to make things possible. And when you go to a DTP training, there's that element of reflection. You get to sit there and listen to instructors. You get to hear people share. You also get to hear case studies from your colleagues because everyone gets to share about the human rights situation where they're from. And so you get this deep reflection that's actually necessary in human rights work for the revolution part. Because usually, you don't have enough time to reflect. You're just always taking actions immediately, which usually causes most people to burn out. But I think the DTP really reignites your fire to allow you to concentrate on the long-term revolution to make positive change and ensure dignity, equality, and justice for all people. So DTP does that really well. And on the other side, human rights is constantly evolving. I have to admit from the first time I did a DTP training to the DTP classes I do now, the exciting thing is everything's much greater. There's a lot more opportunities to organize and to be able to participate at the global level for specific causes. So the other side is, even if you studied and you've gotten your great grades and you're you know, a leader in your community, there's a lot happening at the UN all the time, almost every year. And to know the new institutions exist and what has come up, it's an amazing, way to participate. So if you just look at business and human rights, when I first started, there were no guiding principles on business and human rights. Now there's guiding principles that have been adopted. Now there's national action plans on business and human rights. 
now there's a working group on business and human rights. I was fortunate enough to be able to participate and to create at the Human Rights Council. Now there's even a potential treaty on business and human rights. So that's in a short time period. The Human Rights Council is evolving. They're creating new special procedures all the time. There's now, just from June, a new independent expert on sexual orientation and gender identity. So I think as activists and advocates, we have our toolkit and we have to keep our, our, our tools sharp and DTP allows you to really make sure that your insight and your intellect is at the top level so that you can help your people the best way possible. Thank you. Thank you for your time. That no was problem. really, really helpful. Thank you.